All right. Hey guys, I'm Sean Stone. And I'm Jay Bates. And we get email. So what's today's question? Yeah. So today's question is from Joel. He says, my question is workbench related. I acquired some old used hard maple flooring. It's in relatively good condition. If I mill it down, I can get roughly five eighths of an inch by one and a half inch strips. I'd love to have a hard maple hand tool bench. I don't think that's thick enough by any means to build the top. I'm thinking torsion box with the flooring top and as trim. If you have any ideas, I'd love to hear it. Thanks in advance. All right, so Joel is asking about a torsion box. So if he lays this flooring flat on the torsion box and as trim, that's what he's got in his, that's what he said he's thinking. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's solid wood, it depends. So a torsion box with a solid wood top, I would, it wouldn't work. The, the, the thing is, if you're using like plywood or um, engineered products for engineered sheets for the, the structure of the torsion box, you can't overlay that with uh, actual wood because, or, or solid wood boards because wood will expand and contract much more than those engineered sheet products. So you're, you're gonna run into expansion and contraction issues. So if you're wanting a torsion box, torsion box tops are fantastic for assembly stuff, mm. but just stick to torsion box uh, engineered, you know, engineered sheet products for that. Uh, plywood, all of it being plywood, all of it being MDF. And then at that point, if you wanna run trim around the outside. Yeah, with the maple. With maple or something like that, then that's plenty acceptable. But what yeah. you don't want to run into is a situation where uh, the plywood and the stuff below it will not expand and contract at the same rate so as whatever's on top. You basically have two different types of wood that are contradicting each other if you were to do that. Yeah, basically. Yeah, the, the the solid top is either going to expand and cause issues with the bottom, or the solid top is going to shrink and start cracking because it's secured to the stuff below it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the uh, outfit assembly table that I have here is a torsion box, but it's all made out of plywood. Mm -hmm. It's got a plywood top and everything. So it's all the same material. Uh, so yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Uh, now, as far as, I guess that answered his question. Uh, do you want to talk about the different types of workbenches? Yeah. So going back to the, the all right, five eighths by one. Oh and yeah. Half, okay. Go ahead. Five eighths Sorry. by one and a half inch strip maple boards. Uh, for a workbench top. It depends on the direction of your dimensions there. If you try and lay out your boards so the 5 eighths of an inch dimension is your thickness, you're going to have a relatively thin top. Yeah, I don't think it'll be thick enough. I wouldn't recommend something like that for a hand tool workbench because yeah. one of the benefits of a hand tool workbench is something that has a lot of solid mass that doesn't move around and uh, doesn't bounce back the uh, forces like when you're chiseling or using a mallet you don't want something that bounces back you want something solid that all of the forces go right through the cutting edge into the into the work so taking those same boards the five eighths of an inch thick and then uh putting them on end so mm -hmm. they're one and a half inch tall and then laminating a bunch of those together for that's a, a workbench that's perfectly acceptable yeah. that's that'll do a fantastic job and one and a half of an inch one and one half an inch thick is perfectly fine for a workbench top especially if you're using hard maple there's a lot of um nicholson style and english work english style workbenches that are commonly made from pine like two by ten or two by twelve boards for the top and that's one and a half an inch one and a half inch thick pine so having maple hard maple instead of pine you're fine you're absolutely fine yeah go ahead i didn't mean to okay. cut you off here okay so just going from that and talking about different types of workbenches um, i think we have a little bit different setups in each of our shops so if you look right behind us here we've got or i have in my shop there is a uh, i'll right do my here. best vanna white yeah there you oh sorry we're we've got a two by four frame construction bench with a plywood top. Now, this is all connected to the wall, which is a brick wall behind it. And then here where the leg vise is, is a leg that is making contact with the concrete floor below it. So that in that location is one of the most solid or most strongest or the strongest yeah, it's it's the strongest. points of the workbench basically. Yes, because if you're on the if you're on the top working on the top of that leg, then w all of your forces transferring, are yeah. transferring right through the top, right into the leg, right into the floor. There's nothing there to 
bounce. It's yeah. just a solid structure. And, and that's the reason why the leg vice is here in that location. Now, if you were to, you know, move down the bench a little bit on this particular setup, some of the things on the bench top would kind of move around and bounce. So I've got one solid area on this workbench, but this is fine. I mean, if all you do is two by four and plywood, you can make it work. Now, Jay has a little bit of different setup. You've got what, a more traditional style. Yeah, it's, it's a traditional style workbench, but it's a standalone bench. So my bench, my, my workbench is, it's solid. It's got a lot of mass because it is standing alone in a shop. Uh, and like you just said, you don't necessarily have to have something like that. If you build something that is structurally rigid, like this, it's built into the wall, it's not going anywhere, it's mm. it's stationary, then you know that'll work as long as you have clamping options and stuff like that. So yeah. at, at one point, I'll say, you know, you don't, uh, having a solid workbench is fantastic, but don't get caught up into the whole thing where it's 100% necessary. Uh, mm -hmm. And then just a uh, just a out there statement, I guess, torsion box style assembly tables and MFT style assembly tables, the Polk workbench, that kind of those kind of workbenches, fantastic for power tools. Traditional solid workbenches, fantastic for hand tools. The thing is, on a traditional workbench, you can use both hand tools and power tools really easily, and on the more engineered style. You know torsion box style stuff it's basically just set up for power tools it's frustrating using hand tools on something like that yeah so i think that pretty much covers uh, all the workbenches and that kind of thing yeah so all right so thanks guys and we'll see you later see you in the next one